Hello, my beautiful people. My name is Dr. Cartel. Welcome to another episode of Basic Nigerian History. Let's get started. Now, last episode, we discussed Nigeria's first taste of independence and the issues that were immediately obvious to the new republic. This episode, we're going to discuss the first national elections after the independence. Now, by this time, the national elections were coming around in 1964 and 1965. AG had been more or less maneuvered out of control of the Western region by Berlewa's government and the NNDP, a more pro-government Yoruba party was put in place and led by Samuel Akintola. In December 30th, the national election took place. So this was how things were set up in preparation for the elections. NPC, which was the party currently in power, made a conservative alliance with few fringe parties in the South, with their main ally being NNDP. Stands for the Nigerian National Democratic Party and was Akintola's new and unpopular party in the West that nobody wanted a part of. Together, they formed the Nigerian National Alliance, NNA. The goal was to keep the status quo as it currently was. Obviously, nobody except the North wanted that. NCNC made alliances with the remaining AG and all the other minority parties, including Nepal, the minority party from the North. It also made an alliance with the United Middle Belt Congress and so on. Together, they formed the UPGA, the United Progressive Grand Alliance, and their main aim was to oust MPC and restore AG in the West. I told you guys, we are heading into the era of Nigeria history where acronyms suddenly become the next big thing. Everything is an acronym. MPC, NNA, da, da, da. It's, gonna, it's gonna be long. In the North, campaigners were physically restricted from campaigning by the sitting government. Over 297 UPGA supporters were arrested and detained without access to lawyers, some for a year, most for at least six months, and even party candidates were detained and arrested. In the West, Akintola's NNDP was in charge of the regional government. They did everything in their power to quash UPGA and its supporters. Thugs beat up UPGA supporters, destroyed property, etc., etc. UPGA party candidates that submitted application forms had no way of knowing they would be processed and they were generally prevented from being able to be nominated. Basically, it was bedlam. A lot of candidates ran uncontested. 88 out of 174 NNA seats in the North were uncontested. NNDP won 30 seats in the West uncontested, and NCNC also wanted percent of their seats uncontested. Are you noticing a trend here? It seems that from the get-go, Nigerian leaders immediately started using corruption and bullying tactics. This is not unexpected because after all, these groups of people were forced together by the British and they had no reason to work together. Losing the dirty battle, NCNC attempted to organize a boycott. AG eventually agreed on the 29th of December, a day just before the elections. But the boycott only worked in the eastern region. The Midwestern Premier, Osadebe, was, despite being an NCNC man, for some reason he ordered the election to go on in his own region. This resulted in a failed boycotts that gave NNA an even bigger and one-sided victory that they should have had. In 1965, Balewa wanted Zik to make an NNA government, but he refused. Instead, they agreed that the successfully boycotted seats would be recontested in March 1965. They also agreed that the elections for the Western Region Assembly would take place again in October 1965, and that Balewa would need to form a broad government that incorporated UPGA members wherever possible. Anyways, in the end, the NNA guys won 198 out of 312 seats in total. It was a clear victory. The whole process soured and created resentment amongst the UPGA supporters and made Nigerians in general question the fairness of their democracy. The 1965 elections for the Western Region Assembly was another repeat of the 1964 elections. Basically, it was widespread fraud, corruption, and so on. Akintola's NNDP used a arrest and violence, thugs out of fear of losing power to the popular AG party. AG wanted to change the agreements they had made with NCNC for more seats, so even UPGA was competing with each other. By October 11th of 1965, there were tons of cases of multiple voting and ballot stuffing. Akintola decided 
the results will only be publicized from the party's HQ in Ibadan instead of the local polling stations. This gave his party more time to alter and doctor the results as necessary. And then on the 13th of October, the preliminary results were announced. Both sides declared victory. NNDP officially claimed 51 seats to UPGA's 11. And Chief Adegbenro of AG declared UPGA had taken 68 seats. Adegbenro and other UPGA leaders were arrested and detained for disregarding official results. This sparked riots all over the Yoruba West. AG areas discovered that despite everyone choosing in their area the AG candidates, they had apparently still somehow elected an NNDP representative. What furthered this was NNDP's ill-timed decision to reduce the price for cocoa. NNDP controlled the marketing boards and should have reduced this price a while ago, but they didn't because of the pressure of the elections. Once they won, they reduced it to the price it was supposed to be, which was a 50% decrease from 120 to 65 pounds. The cocoa farmers erupted in anger and revolted, joining UPGA's riots. Throughout November and December of 1965, the Yoruba West was a battle zone. There were killings, burnings, lootings. It was chaos. Balewa, instead of declaring a state of emergency, sent troops to support Akintola. But it was too late. The West was already out of control. They were incredibly bitter at the government's inability to provide a democratic governance. The Igbo military officers were the champion of these bitter feelings. They were tired of the inability of the federal system to keep peace and work in the best interest of all Nigerians instead of just a particular region. So guess what? They began to plot a coup, a way to take over. And I think I'll leave it there for this episode. I just wanted to give you guys that little cliffhanger before we move on to the next episode. Obviously, you already know what we're going to talk about in the next episode. The coup. The first coup that happened during Nigeria's first republic. Recap of what we learned. There's no need. You already know what we learned. Guys, don't forget to subscribe. Don't forget to like. Don't forget to comment, hit the notification bell, share it with your friends, share it with your family. Also, if you want to support us, go to the Patreon. The link is in the description below. I think that is it. Dr. Cartel loves you and I am out. Mm -hmm.